Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. This is Fish from Vlog number 49, though it may be hard to tell. Because this is my phone, the phone I use to record all the footage for the videos I put up. And ever since, a bit before Christmas, uh, the charging port on this has been getting uh, more and more finicky. Uh, it started off that I couldn't really uh, get it to connect well to the computer. Uh, I have to wiggle it quite a bit, so I ended up downloading the app that I can do that wirelessly, and that was fine. It was excruciatingly slow. Uh, then I figured that would be fine, because my contract for this phone is not up until the end of this year, and it was going to cost me, uh, I don't know, what was it, $600 to buy out the contract and get a new phone, and I certainly wasn't going to do that. And then as it started getting more, like, more and more finicky. <laughs> this is called it worse. It was getting to the point where it was getting quite annoying. Even charging it was getting quite difficult and I went back and I was talking to them. This is before our current lockdown and I asked them if there's any options and he gave me the number for someone who uh, actually can uh, take the phone apart and uh, swap out the charging port and that would have been fine. Well, that's going to be roughly about $120, $130 to have that done. And I didn't want to do that because, well, I mean, I am going to replace this phone, hopefully, uh, in, by the end of the year. So I just stuck it out. It got to the point where I had to spend about five minutes fiddling with the charging, uh, the, the mini USB thing, to get it into the socket in a position where it would charge. And then I could take my fingers away and it would stay charging because most often what would happen is it would just you know not recognize it being there anymore and i'd have to fiddle with it again <clears throat> well to make this long story a little bit shorter it got to the point uh yesterday where there's just nothing i could do to get it to charge in i kind of got to sit once uh, then i thought it was good i went away but this takes a little bit of a vibration and all of a sudden it disconnects and uh, you end up with you know as you can see here 13 percent so I had to put together a little bit of a acrylic cradle here with a couple of bolts so I can actually physically hold the two pieces together so it will actually charge. So that's why you're looking at this. And I do promise uh, we are going to get to uh, the actual fish room stuff now. But I had to make this. It only took about uh, 20 minutes, half hour to put it together. But it does tie into a lot of the concepts I've been uh, trying to get across with all these dollar store builds. DIY is not necessarily just about saving money. It is about being able to uh, put things together that you need and to, uh, well, in this case, I am saving money. But also, I can't really get to uh, that person to have the phone fixed because they're in this big lockdown. So that's enough about my phone. <laughs> Let's move on to something you're more interested in looking at. When I posted the video for this, I got an awful lot of wonderful responses for people who are interested in having this as a giveaway. And I've decided that's what I'm going to do. I am going to do a little sanding on the edges just to take off the rough bits and uh, double check it again for integrity. But I'm pretty sure it's all fine at this point, but I'll do it one more time. And for those of you who didn't watch the original video for this, uh, you can leave a comment in uh, the section below here and let me know that you're interested in it as a giveaway and of course uh, willing to pay for shipping and I will do a draw have it for next Sunday and uh, good luck to everybody and I hope you guys uh, who are well, actually sorry whoever gets it uh, really enjoys having it and sets it up and hopefully we'll take some shots of it and let me know how it goes and that brings us to this dollar store box filter build I put together a few days ago I want to show you a little clip of this just to show you that uh, the plastic doesn't seem to be discoloring, which is not surprising because it is food grade. It seems to be holding together okay. Uh, the problem obviously is it's way too soon to tell if it's doing any kind of filtration. I did try to zoom in on a little bit here to see if there's anything in there, uh, but it's only been a few days and so far there's really nothing about this at all. But I hope it is. Uh, in a little while I'll be putting it into the queue for the ammonia filter tests and so far what's in front of it is uh, it's going to be the two-stage two box filter and then it's going to be the 3d printed one and then it's going to be this so it should be interesting I'm actually looking forward to seeing how all three of them compare because this is obviously just thrown together with 
the not the best of materials. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, it even remotely can compete or oh, compete. We'll see. And as you can see, the Java Moss bog filter is doing really well. The Java Moss is now almost completely above the waterline everywhere. And like I said, I have lots of high hopes for this filter, so it's going to be interesting to see how this is going to progress. The next stage is to take a fair amount of pearl weed that's growing out of one of my aquariums uh, right here, and I'm going to uh, pull a bunch of that off, and I'm going to uh, plop it down, at least in part of the filter, so that it can uh, take off as well. And we'll see how that goes. And of course, I'm going to do a bunch of measurements and chemistry of the aquariums that they're going to be in, and all that sort of stuff too. So. Yeah, this is actually an interesting experiment. Now, this tank just used to have a bit of uh, pothos and cane and whatnot, but I've added a lot more. I have taken uh, most of that seven foot tank where all the angels and everything else are gonna go apart now. And I massively cut back uh, this cane and the Diefenbachia that's there. And it is uh, gonna go in there for the moment. Now, I have a video coming up where I am going to do something slightly different with uh, my micro and crop uh, and that's why that potato is sitting there, because I had one extra. Uh, we'll see when that comes up. Uh, and you can see I have potted that air leaf plant, and I actually potted one more as well on top of that. Uh, they're doing really well, and I wanted to get them into pots and hopefully uh, let them take off even more. Now there's still two more to go and I will be uh, potting them up as soon as I can <coughs> get the time and get those together. This is still doing really really well. As you can see it's gotten a lot more humid in there which is nice and the moss is very happy. I still have to get in there and plot a couple of little seedlings that you can still see. Uh, they're not growing fast enough to be of any real concern uh, but I don't want them to end up taking over or anything. Now this pothos I had cut back because I wanted to slow its growth down a little bit, but unfortunately you can see it is now sending roots down into a, one of my aquariums. Uh, so I'm going to probably have to cut that off a little bit more again. I don't really care for pothos roots in the tanks because it just gets in the way of everything and it's kind of hard to disentangle it. Uh, so I am going to have to snip that back. There is the other arrow leaf. It is... Uh, just been planted I think the day before I uh, recorded this so it is going to take a little time for it to start growing uh, but it's doing really well so and all the other plants are doing fine except of course that one uh, succulent that I have now removed I still have it growing in the paludarium uh, so it will uh, at least stay in the fish room that way and as you can see the java moss is doing really well uh, along with the java fern and that uh, high humidity planter and I still have these that need to be potted. There's always so many things to do, and I just never seem to get around to uh, getting it all done, and I don't think it's even possible. But it is a work in progress. And the last couple clips are all about fry. These are the tubs I've been using for first hatching out and then raising up, at least for the first little bit, the Bosmani Rainbow Fry. And as you can see, I'm planning on adding a third one in here. And that's because as these fry uh, grow up a little bit, these ones are getting to the point now where they're almost ready for uh, microworms and then again, hopefully onto uh, baby brine shrimp. And then they are gonna be too big to have any siblings with them. So what I've been doing is I take the Java Moss out of the tank and I add it into uh, that bin that you saw was on the right. And what I do then is as they hatch out, I use a turkey baster and put them into that tub. And then I hit them with uh, vinegar eels and infusoria. And again, they're doing really quite well. And it's time, I think, almost for them to go to an aquarium, probably by next week. And at that point, uh, of course, I don't probably need the third tub, but I don't want to put the really little ones in with the big ones because they certainly won't be able to compete with them. So that's the reason for that. And this should be the last week that you see these guys in this aquarium. Hopefully next week they'll be in the seven foot tank it's pretty much all done now, so it's a simple matter of transferring them over and doing the culling process to sort them out a little bit. And uh, hopefully, again, you'll see them in a much bigger tank. So thanks again for watching. If you're interested in that uh, pay for the shipping uh, giveaway, uh, definitely let me know in the comments below, and I will, again, pick the winner for uh, next Sunday. So thanks again for watching. I will see you in the next video, and bye for now.